Good morning, everyone. Yes, you can applaud for Becky, please do so. Welcome one and all to worship this day as we gather and we remind ourselves that this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, welcome one and all to worship. Those of you in person, you know, hopefully you have your bulletins. Uh, for those of you online, welcome as well. Uh, I invite you to uh, make sure that you know, some things that might help, uh, one, light a candle like we do here, to remind yourself of God's enduring presence and the baptismal challenge to let your light so shine before others, they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Also, if you're joining us for communion, please have those elements handy. Um, this morning, as we gather, as always, we remind ourselves of God's amazing grace and unconditional love in Jesus Christ. We at Beautiful Savior say that we invite people to live in Christ in grace, generosity, reaching out, advocacy, compassion, and encouragement. Uh, lots of ways of generosity being shown throughout through our community connections and the things going on. Thank you for everything else. One of the primary ways in which we have extended our reach and reaching out is through this. So I'm going to ask for a bit of grace because since we started this journey about 15 months ago, we've had about four people running Zoom. Not one of them is in the state of Arizona this weekend. So guess who's doing it? So hopefully we got it all straight now. But so that's an extra plea. You know, if you've got a good internet connection and some capability of operating a computer, we can train you for the rest. Um, but also if you know someone, one of the things we're ultimately really wanting to look towards is the fully integrated system that we have. So if you know someone who is capable of operating something like that, a more involved PowerPoint, shall we say, a, you know, please let us know, because uh, that is something that as we continue to go forward and grow as a congregation in reaching out, in sharing the good news of God in Jesus Christ, some of our ministries and our abilities to serve have changed. So please, if you know anyone, please let me know. So that's, you know, that's how we're going to operate today. So good luck to us all, right? All right. So here we go. Let us continue with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Savior, lead me to the home I treasure, where at last I'll find eternal rest. Day by day, I know you will provide me strength to serve and wisdom to The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of creation, o eternal majesty, you preside over land and sea, sunshine and storm. By your strength, pilot us. By your power, preserve us. By your wisdom, instruct us and by your hand protect us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Job, chapter 38. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk, or who laid its cornerstone, when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with the doors when it burst out from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed bounds for it and set bars and doors and said, thus far you shall come, and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stopped. Word of God, word of life. Today's psalm is from Psalm 107. Um, I will read the plain text if you will read responsibly in the bulk text. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good, for God's mercy endures forever. Gathering them in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They beheld the works of the Lord, God's wonderful works in the deep. Not 
They mounted up to the heavens and descended to the depths. Their souls melted away in their peril. Then in their trouble, they cried to the Lord, and you delivered them from their distress. Then they were glad when it grew calm, when you guided them to the harbor they desired. Let them exalt you in the assembly of the people. In the council of the elders, let them sing, hallelujah. Today's gospel comes to us after the gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, this follows immediately after the lessons of last Sunday, where Jesus was on the, the shore talking about seeds and mustard seeds and, every, and the sower. Now he travels along. On that day when evening had come, Jesus said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him up and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was dead calm. He said to them, why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The gospel of our Lord. Praise you, O Christ. Please be seated. Needless to say, I moved on from seed jokes to ship jokes uh, while looking, preparing for this, you know, so you, you might want to, you know, ship me out, as it were. But, you know, it, it's kind of fun when you're researching different things, some of the things you learn, you know, like I discovered why portholes are round. It's so the sea doesn't hit you square in the face. It's all, I also found out, I mean, I was confused by that. You know, it's like, you know, you, you drive a car, it's miles per hour, kilometers per hour. You go in a ship or a boat, it's knots. Do you know why they use knots? It's the only way to keep the sea tight. Stretch. Yes, I know. I know. You're about ready to send me out on a raft. I get it was a naughty joke, exactly. It was a very naughty joke. Mm -hmm. I know. No keel hauling me, not today. But, you know, you get the sinking feeling anytime I see Steve in the congregation. <laughs> yeah, very deep, yes, very deep. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, uh, yes, it's, it's nice to be heckled in your own congregation now. When can we go back to just doing this on Zoom? I'm just wondering, yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, the good old days, yes, I know. But, is, but isn't that kind of interesting? I mean, just how different things are and how we keep going and what we need to learn and what we've been going through. I mean, you know, let, let's face it, you know, there's a, there's a phrase in our society. It says, you know, we're all in this ship together. We're all in this boat together, right? All right, we have this phrase. We probably heard it dozens of times in the last year. You know, we're all in the same boat. Really? Are we all in the same boat? You know, one of the things, you know, I, you know, learned growing up is, you know, you know, just like this past week, uh, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law were in town. You know, they have four kids, basically 16 to 12, you know? Todd is a father. I am a father. He has four basically teenagers. I have Zach. 
We're both fathers. Same? No, probably not in so many ways. Um, you know, we, we have different experiences in how life goes on, right? All the different things that happen, the different people you meet, the different experiences they have, all in the same boat together? Well, you know, one of the things, you know, we learned, you know, when, you know, many years ago is we got asked to do a panel discussion with uh, the children's hospital. And they asked different parents from different backgrounds. Should parents of a child with type 1 diabetes, cerebral palsy, childhood schizophrenia, autism. And we sat there, we answered questions for their therapist. He's like, what does it mean to be a parent in that kind of situation? And we all have different, you know, we all are parents. And the one thing we all agreed on by the time that all of the parents were done was we couldn't do what you were doing. We all said that back and forth to each other. I couldn't handle what you've got. I couldn't handle what you've got. We're all parents. We all have experience. We all have special children. Same boat? You know, many years ago when we were on a cruise, you know, there was this big storm going on. And depending upon where we were, I mean, where our room was and where other people's rooms were, I mean, it was a very different experience when the winds and the waves came up. For us, it was kind of gentle and rocking. For some of the people higher up on the ship, it was a little bit more like a ping pong game. We were literally in the same boat together, but different experiences. Does that mean that we're all different and we're all separated? Because if we're in that same boat together, let's face it, if there's a fire in one room, it affects. If there's a hole in the hull, it affects. But it might affect us each differently, but we're in the same boat together. But to understand and to believe that everybody has the same experiences, everyone has the same outcome, everyone is in the same situation, is a bit of arrogant presumption, is it not? And we see it very powerfully in the reaction of the disciples. The sin that we have to deal with so much when we're in this boat together, in this boat called life, if nothing else, is there's this huge storm. And the waves are crashing, and it's getting higher and higher, and the boat itself is swamped. And if you've ever been in a boat, you know the stern is where a bunch of water is running. And who's asleep in a cushion back there on his own little personal waterbed? Jesus. And the disciples go up to him and, don't you care we are perishing? Notice, nothing about the fact that the boat might be going down. Nothing about anything else other than the fact that we are being negatively impacted. So much so we're going to wake you up and totally miss the fact that you're asleep. Now, please remember, folks, in the gospel stories, Jesus hasn't walked on water yet. They have no clue what's going to happen. They can very naturally assume that if the boat goes down, so does he. But what about me? I'm going to drown. Wake up. Start being as upset as me. Jesus gets up and yells at the storm, peace, be still. Peace, be still. Now. In this boat called life, how much do we need to hear those words to us? Stop and go, yeah. 
But notice he rebukes the wind and the waves, but I bet you those words are also for those 12 very devout, very faithful, very rock-headed disciples he had. Did you see I was sleeping? But here's the catch. Now notice, here's something else that you're looking. Not only do we have to look at our general sin of assuming that everybody else's situation and experience is the same, better or worse, so much so that we will be a problem to another person who's literally in the same boat as we, But notice now what ends up happening. Jesus rebukes the wind and the waves. Peace, be still. Here's a question for you. How'd they get ashore now? Whip out their Evan Rood? Throw it over the side, give it a couple of pulls, and on in? Oh, okay, smart guys, man the oars. <laughs> okay, Peter, row the boat ashore. But here's the thing. Now let's stop and think about this cavalcade of people in this boat that now is in a dead calm in the middle of a very large lake. You've got to hit the oars. How well do you think that actually went? Because remember, amongst these 12, there's four fishermen. There's also rabbis, tax collectors, zealots, and God knows what else from different backgrounds. Who do you think ended up having to do the heavy lifting? Who was more effective in handling the oar? Who had to do the heavy pulling? Notice that at no point in the story is there anything about Peter, James, John, and Andrew going, well, I really wish Thaddeus would pull his weight more. Or I doubt Thomas knows which end of an oar to hold. Notice there is no question about how this is going to happen, and no differentiation on what's all needed. But there is definitely, let's pay attention to the fact that there's going to be a distinct difference in who's going to be able to do it effectively. And yes, they're all in that same boat together, but some of them are going to do it better than others in this task but there's no discernment, no distinction. We all bring different gifts. We all bring different experiences. We all bring ourselves into this boat that we are together. We are all individuals with our different talents and abilities and everything else like that. We are called to be mindful of one another. We're called to look out for one another, because if one goes over, that's not good. But at the same token, the end result is the mission. We've got to get this boat ashore. And it's not going to get ashore by at each other. That's a lot of wasted energy. And no one's going, well, look at me. I did more work than you. The end result was they got ashore. How different is that compared to our world and our life? How often do we instead look to ourselves and go, well, I did more than you. Or that person isn't pulling their weight. Or whatever. How much do we look to one another who was in the same boat as you in a critical way? As opposed to an understanding we're all in this together.
you are sitting in what's called a nave. Now in more quote unquote traditional architecture churches with your two rows of pews that stretch for miles from the altar to the back end, it was designed to look like a ship, nave, naval ship, okay? It's meant to remind us of Noah's Ark. It's meant to remind us of a safe place for all of us to be in. To remember that promise, that peace that comes to us. That's what we are called to remember in this space. Some churches, actually some real old churches that have this design, if you get to about this point in the church, you look up, you'll see a model ship aiming towards the harbor, the safe harbor, the sanctuary. One church I interviewed at actually was at one point in time, it was the successor of two other churches. And literally it had three ships up there. So I asked him if the pastor was called an admiral. And they said, no, you just have to make sure you keep your ship together. Needless to say, they shouldn't have called me, and they did, but that's okay. We hear, you know, and we are, need to be reminded of that fact that that's our mission. That's where the boat's headed into this safe space, this safe harbor, the sanctuary that is provided for us, this one who is in our midst. We remember on the night he was betrayed, he is. He was with us on that boat in the midst of everything going on. And he was just there as literal a person of peace. How much more peaceful can you be when you're sleeping? This is not about having to acquire. This is about understanding the fact that we are truly all in this one boat together. This boat that is on the waves with the God who created it all. You know, anytime you might think, you know, when you might go, well, look at me, I did all this stuff and look at those other people. Reread the last few chapters of Job, okay? Anytime you are feeling either all of that and a bag of chips or that God doesn't care about you, please read that last section where I talked about God going, yeah, and who created? Who was there? Who made it? Oh, and who did I make it for? It reminds me of the story that said that scientists have gotten so far in cloning technology and life technology that they were able to infuse, take dirt and make it alive. And God showed up and said, I got to see this. And the scientists reached for God's dirt and he said, no, 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 no. First, you got to make your own dirt. And anytime we might think that we're doing more and other people are doing less in this boat that we're on, someone's not handling the oars properly or enough, I would invite you to stop and look at the large lowercase t in the front of the church and ask yourself the question kind of similarly to the questions God asked Job. So who went there? Who saved the world? Including those that put them there. Who did it? Who rose from the dead? Again, this is not about our efforts or our abilities, but we are gathered in this ark to be reminded of that peace that surpasses human understanding, that gift of the presence of God so that we can go out from it. That's the mission, to go out and to show and to share others. There is this God who is in your midst, even in the midst of the fiercest storm of your life. When you think God can't be with you because you are too far gone, remember, he went there. 
just as he was in the middle of the storm. Why? For you. He got into the same boat with us. It still sends us forth. Peace. Be still. Yes. Who is this guy? This is the Alpha, the Omega. This is the one who created and the one who redeems and the one who continues to be with us. The one who continues to be the one who gives us love and gives us the strength to rise again day after day, no matter the storm. So we can say, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice regardless of what's going on. Because you might find a little cushion in the midst of everything with someone sleeping on. But that reminds us again that it's not about us being God, that we need God. I have a little plaque above my computer in my office that reminds me of the ultimate story of this, and that is today I will let God be God because I suck at it. But I am called to care for one another. I'm called to be a part of this journey. I'm called to go to those new places. I'm called to be a person of peace, just as I need to hear the message of peace. And so immersed by the waters of baptism, surrounded by the blessings and gifts and talents that God has bestowed upon you, those are what you're called to be about on this boat as we keep going forward. And so let's remind ourselves of the promises God gave us in baptism. You repeat after me, please. I've been sealed with the Holy Spirit. I've been marked by the cross of Christ forever. I am Christ's. Welcome, brothers and sisters to the ark. May we go forth as people of peace, as people of love, caring for one another and for the world around us, just as the one in our midst does. And remember that God loves you, and so do I. Amen. Whispers, peace, 
I invite you to join me as we confess the faith of the church to the words of the Apostles' Creed, our baptismal creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we come to the prayers of the people, we lift up the, the joys and concerns that have been shared with us. And so as we prepare our hearts for prayer, O oh Lord, hear our prayer. those needing health and healing, especially Jack, Gloria, Olivia, David, Lynn, Anne, Aaron, Mary, Barbara, Tricia, Dave, Ryan, Jerry, Loretta, Jasmine, Dick, Lenine, Connie, Don, and Loretta. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. For those dealing with cancer, especially Jake, JR, Jim, Heidi, Susan, Kenya, Barb, Susie, Jeannie, Kay, Shirley, and Sean. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. For all first responders, healthcare workers, those who care for others, especially the most vulnerable in our, in our society. We especially lift up Ben, Lori, Josh, Joe, Mark, Kara, Greg, Christine, Rachel, Aaron, Sarah, Mike, Susan, Linda, Colin, Lindsay, Nancy, PJ, Erica, Michelle, Jennifer, Betsy, Samantha, Emma, Rihanna, Allison, Randy, Matthew, Aaron, Darren, and Heather. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. who mourn for whatever reason, especially we lift up the family and friends of Andrew Stanley, 
Susie Anderson, the lovely Edith Hatch, Uncle Jerry, Ellen Mooney, Fly Johnson Vosberg, and Betty Jean Butler. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those facing tragedies, near and far, man-made and natural, big and small, that we especially lift up and pray for those who care for, to recreate, rebuild, comfort, and restore. We lift up especially a lot of our wildland firefighters at this time, especially. For those facing housing, food, health care, and financial insecurities, because we may all be in the same boat, but for families in crisis and those feeling alone and isolated, for a quick and safe distribution of vaccines, for care, compassion, justice, and peace for all as we continue to pray for peace in the Middle East. But we also pray for those facing hatred for any reason whatsoever as we lift up the rise of anti-Semitic activities in our own community even but also all of those remembering the Emmanuel 9 and Juneteenth. For those who are known only to God that are on our hearts right now. For fathers, for dads, for those that provide those roles, give them peace and strength to do what is right. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. for all of the ways in which we know your presence, for all the ways we see life, for all the things that bring us peace, and all the ways in which we can use those talents and gifts that we have received to be a person of peace, to be a sign of the presence of Christ, to bring love to all of those others who are in that same boat called life. We give thanks for the ways in which we can show generosity, reaching out, advocacy, compassion, and encouragement. But also we simply give thanks for the gift of life, for those celebrations that we have. And a special shout out on today, because today is his birthday, we celebrate the birthday of Richard Mauta, and we celebrate the anniversary of no, Debbie and Juan Akala. So that, Dan Akala, not Juan, Dan's going to start asking questions now. Debbie and Dan, Akala. And all those other signs of love, all those other signs of life. May we see them, may we celebrate them, and may we share them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please find some way to share the peace of the Lord with everyone, both now and going forward. Here's a great time to welcome all visitors enthusiastically. Wave!
and eat. Go right ahead. Trust me, I won't be cross with you. For those of you who can't see us online, a uh, very nice gift Randy is handing out crosses to, to people who are here. So you can get a, you can get a cross. He's being nice and sharing what would be an offering. Uh, for those of you gathered here, no, we're not passing the plates just yet, but the offering plates are back in the, in the narthex in the gathering area. We still receive mail. You can send checks. There's also the different electronic giving options, uh, including ones for Sunday dollars and the youth group uh, for the trip next year for National Youth Gathering. Those are found on the website that we have. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Now, as we uh, set the table, uh, for those of you gathered here, the table will be the altar. You will be invited to come forward and uh, receive uh, the wafers. Uh, as you come down the center aisle, the ushers will uh, release you. Just to invite you to hold out your hands like the cradle that held the Christ child, or hey, it's your own little boat um, that you can receive the, the wafer in. And then depending on which side you're sitting on, you just turn to either side. Each There will be two tables over here. There's a cup of wine, a cup of grape juice that will be out that you can take and receive, and then you can return back to your seat. For those of you joining us online, uh, now's the time to make sure you got all the, everything out. Simple plate, simple cup, wine, grape juice, something simple, bread, crackers, something simple. Jesus sat at a buffet, folks, and just took the simple staple items to remind us that God's presence in the basic and the simple, that God is just here. So you're prepared and we are prepared. Let us continue. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Gathered around the throne of grace, let us proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks. We cry out Hosanna. Because in this life, in this space, in the storms we find ourselves in, we know that Christ is present. We know that God is here with us. The one who created is also the one who presently comes and redeems and continues to sustain us. That we are never abandoned, alone, or forsaken. That we are in this journey together. And so we remember on the night in which our Savior was betrayed, he took bread. He blessed it and broke it, gave it for us to eat, and said, take and eat all of you. This is my body. It's broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. After giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, take and drink. This cup contains the blood of the new covenant shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. So may we be strengthened. Yet again, may we receive the peace that passes understanding. May we be immersed once again in the love of God and by the power of the Holy Spirit, rise us up to newness of life and send us forth proclaiming Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom, dear Lord, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come. So for those, I invite my communion assistants to come forward at this time and set their, uh, get to their spots. The, um, for those of you who are going to be here, again, remember the usher will direct you and you'll come down the center aisle. For those of you at home, if you have someone there, you can take turns giving and receiving. I invite you to do so. Um, if not, uh, just remember, most importantly, you're not, wor you're not worshiping alone. You're not taking communion alone. The communion of saints, the great cloud of witnesses, the body of Christ is gathered and present. Christ is in your midst right now. So the body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, take and eat, take and drink, these gifts given for you.
One of the great gifts of this time to be able to do these kinds of things where you can have people who are not even in the same room at the same time do some amazing things. Thank you, Aaron and Becky, for you know, helping put that together, but especially to Erica and Craig and Luann Johnson for bringing their talents to us. That was indeed a blessing and a reminder that we all need shalom, which means more than just it's okay, peace, it's all wholeness, understanding that you can sleep in the middle of a storm kind of peace. So, thank you. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon us now and forever. Now, again, there's uh, time for those of you who are gathered here uh, following the dismissal and Becky's postlude uh, to spend some time in fellowship. For those of you online, you can stay on there. Yes, you know, yes, we might be in different parts of the boat, but we are all in this one boat together still as the body of Christ. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>